Hello everybody, just a, a message pre-Shabbos for the Drosha um, on Parshas Pinchas and I wanted to share with you an amazing idea, first of all, um, an idea to strengthen our Betochen and Amuna during this time. I heard a beautiful idea from Rav Melech Biederman, a Gematria, get your pen and paper out. You know when a person worries about the past. Often the person in the mind, one of the ways strategies of the eight Zahra is to hold us back in, in the feelings of regret and remorse about the past. And we think to ourselves, and we go, Lama, why did this happen? Lama, why did you do that? The gematria of Lama, Lamad, 30, Mem, 40, Hey, 5. Lama, why did it happen? And then there's another strategy the eight Zahra uses, and that is the strategy of Mayiya. Worrying about the future. Ma yiye. What's going to be? What's going to be with my pranosa? What's going to be with the kids? Are we going to have weddings again? What's ever going to happen with shul again? Ma yiye. What's the gematra of ma yiye? Ma, mem, hey, 45. Yiye, yud, hey, yud, hey. That's 5, 10, 5, 10, 30. 45 plus 30, 75. So what's the connection? 75. Listen to this. The Gematra of Bitochen, Base, Tes, Ches, Vov, Nun, add all up. You're right, 75, Bitochen. That's what we're supposed to have. We're supposed to have Bitochen in the Rabbi Nishon. That's the Koyach, the power of 75. But instead, we waste that Bitochen in relying on a Kodesh Baruch Hu, And instead, we have Bitochen, we put that 75, that energy of 75, into Loma. Worrying about the past and regrets. Ma yiye, fear about the future. No, throw off your worries about the past. Throw off your concerns and regrets. Throw off your concerns and fears about the future. And be tochen, Hashem Throw your burdens onto our Kodesh Baruch Hu. He is the one who's carrying us. And this is what be tochen is. And somebody asked me, well, what's the difference between a muna and bitochen, because the emuna, we've got emuna, seven emuna, and the people say have bitochen. Emuna English is faith, and bitochen is trust. What's the difference? So we can explain it with the moshel. Now the moshel, there's a tightrope walker. This tightrope walker, he's well known, world renowned for taking walking in circuses and at great heights, and he walks from building to building. But one day he takes a new challenge. He's going to be walking. And this on these skyscrapers on the hundredth floor from one building to another one and people are watching at the bottom on the ground we're looking up as this fellow is walking carefully step by step across this thin rope from one building to another and the fellow is on the ground one says to another do you think he can make it do you think he can do it and the other guy turns around and says to him of course he's always managed to do this why should it be any different he's got a great track record See, so his friend turns around to him and said, Would you sit on his shoulders now? That's the difference between Emuna and Bitoch. And Emuna is, I believe he can do it. He's got a good track record. I believe in Hashem. He can do it. Bitoch means active, practical application of that belief. That's what Bitoch is. And that's really what we're aiming to have. To instead of worrying about the future and have regrets about the past, is about having bitochen, but bitochen is hard because we like to hang on. We like to be in control of a situation. That's the ego that we need to be in control. But really, it's about letting go, letting go to our Kodesh Baruch. We make a start and let go. I'd like to share with you a story from the Maggid of Dubna. The Maggid of Dubna said a very powerful idea that he said that he once gave this once a story, a moshal of. A traveler, there was a traveler called Yankala. Yankala, he was a guy, a merchant, he used to travel one place to another and he had a big rucksack and inside he had pots and pans and bits and pieces, lots of different schura, and he would sell whatever he could, traveling from one place to another. And as he started, he used to hitch a ride from one town to another. So he was at the crossroads waiting one day for his lift. And along comes Moshe Grois. Moshe Grois rocks up in his Mercedes horse and cart 
and he opens the window and he says, Yankla, which direction are you going? Yankla said, yeah, I'm going down that way. He said, hop in, I'll give you a ride to the next crossroads. So he goes, he jumps in, Yankla into Moshe Grois's nice Mercedes wagon, leather seats, air conditioning, and everything there is nice and comfortable. And Yankla sing there, and on his lap he's got his big rucksack, his big bag, his knapsack with all his schur on his lap. And they're sitting there traveling, and then suddenly Moshe Grois says to Yankla, Yankla, why are you holding the bag? Put it down on the floor. Why are you holding the bag? Become yourself comfortable. So Yankla turns to Moshe Grois, he says, Moshe, it's nice of you, that it's really nice of you to give me a lift, to give me a ride. You should also slip my bag as well. What a fool Yankla is. Moshe Grois is already giving him a lift and carrying the bag with him. Of course, put the bag down, says the Maggid of Dugna. We do the same thing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the great wagon driver of the world. He's carrying us. But we hold on to our own peckle and we worry in our fears and distractions and of the fear, regrets of the past and worries for the future. We worry about what's going to be. We're constantly worried, holding our own peckle to ourselves. It says in Keles, throw your burdens down, put them down. To throw you, Hashem Yehovcha, throw them to Hashem. Who Yechal Kalech, He'll sustain you. Whether it's Pranosa, whether there's any other concern, every worry, what we worried about in this time. Hashem Yehovcha, Who Yechal Kalech, Hashem is carrying you. Let go. Don't let the ego think we're in control. One of the messages from COVID for sure is we're not in control. Who would have thought we would, we're not in control of the situation? Nobody knows what's going to be day to day. Countries around the world dealing in different second waves. We don't know what's going to be. The only thing we can do is have bitachon and hang in there, not just to believe in a more, but to live it and actually express that. And in this week's parasha, there's a beautiful vault from the Tiferes Shloma. The Tiferes Shloma is a great rov, Rav Shloma HaKoyen from Radomsk. And he says a beautiful vault in Tehillim. It says in Tehillim, Kuf Tes. It says, Vayamad Pinchas V'yipalel. Pinchas arose ni davant, vata otse a magefa, and the magefa, the plague stopped. Vatokshav loy le stoka, le dora vador adoilam. And this, the fact he got up in he davant, and the plague stopped, should be considered for him as a sadoka, a righteous act, for generation to generation, adoilam forever. That's what Dovah Melech brings into Hillim, chapter Kufov, Posak, Lamad. And he asked the question here, what was so special about Pinchas? that he davened to stop this magefa, that it should be a sadoka for every generation, forever and ever. What was this quality Pinchas has? And he answers with a question. You see, what was special about Pinchas? We already see there was a magefa, and Aaron Cohen already stopped that plague, and he offered up incense. He stood between the Mesim and the Chaim, and he brought the Ketoros. And we also see after the Egel, Moshe Rabbeinu, he also did the same thing. He took the eagle and he grinded it up and he sprinkled it into water and that got rid of the plague of all the people being killed after the eagle. What's unique about Pinchas? It's Pinchas. He did a Dovah Chodosh, something new. Because he realized it's okay if you've got a Moshe Rabbein or an Aaron Akoyin, and it's okay if you've got a Korban you can bring to the Mishkan as a dome. It's okay if you can bring a Katoiris, an incense offering to stop plagues. But what's going to be in a future generation when there's no Koyin, there's no Zevach, there's no Korban, there's no Katoiris? What's going to be when there's going to be a trouble, when there's going to be a Magefa, a Corona, a Covid? What's going to happen to the Bnei Yisrael? How will they survive this? And therefore, Pinchos. He paid thought to himself and he rose into filler alone and through the power of prayer alone he got up and he davened to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Vayamad Pinchas Palel He showed that HaKadosh Baruch Hu just through to filler alone if it's davened with sincerity then that can bring mercy onto the Jewish people and that's why it was considered a Sadaka from generation to generation for eternity because he taught us something even in our generation in 2020 when we're lacking 2020 vision, we don't know what's going to be. And there's this Magaifa. We should be davening. We shouldn't forget. I know when the Magaifa first started, people were saying Avina Makenu and davening. And we sort of got used to living this new way with masks and washing our hands. That's come the norm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a time of a magefa. For Yamad Pinchas for Yipalel, we should daven. We need to have bitachon Akash Bro, not worry about the past or about the future. We've got to live through today. How do we show bitachon by throwing ourselves to Hashem throughout a filler to daven to city for this to end? And we should all be blessed with good health. Soon we should be able to return back to be together, life back to normal, and able to serve Hashem with simcha with a leiv shalem kachavas.